lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Dear Evan Hansen, the novel. This is based off the Broadway musical, also called Dear Evan Hansen. The novel is written by Val Emick with help from the creators of the show, Stephen Levinson, Benj Pasek, and, P and Justin Paul. Both the novel and the musical follow the same premise. Um, it's the same story, the same characters, just told in different ways. There is a lot of the show in the novel a lot of like the lyrics from the music gets uh interpreted into the book and like woven in but they're different experiences and actually i enjoyed the book more than i enjoyed the musical like the book really got into the characters more and um fixed some of the issues i was having with the musical so on the whole i like the book better so the plot line of the story is that our main character Evan Hansen is a teenage boy in high school and he is incredibly socially awkward. He has major anxiety. He's also got a bit of depression. He definitely has trouble putting himself out there and making friends. He really only has one friend who sort of is there for him and that's Jared who's like this family friend who's basically forced to hang out with him. Um, and then there's nobody else. Evan's not really close with anybody. He doesn't feel like he can share. He lives in a single parent home. His mom is trying the hardest she can. She's working at the same time that she's going to school and so there's just not enough hours in the day and so Evan feels very disconnected from everybody else. He feels very lonely and he feels very lost and isolated. So he is going to therapy and part of his therapy is writing these letters to himself telling himself how today's gonna be great. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be different what's going to make the day worth living. So all of Evan's letters start off as, Dear Evan Hansen, today's going to be amazing because... Um, and then he's supposed to come up with something that's going to be good. And we join Evan on the first day of school, I think his senior year. And he's super nervous about school. He's also broken his arm over the summer. He fell out of a tree. Um, and his mom's suggestion is that he should go around and get the cast signed by... Um, other classmates. It'd be a good, you know, icebreaker. And really the only person who notices Evan that day besides Jared is the school bully, um, Connor. So they have this fight uh, around lunchtime and then later Evan goes to the library to print out his letter for therapy. Connor sees it, sees that it says Dear Evan Hansen, so he brings it over to Evan. Evan gets him to sign the cast and Connor is the only one who signed the cast. Um, but Connor starts reading the letter. It talks about Connor's sister, Zoe. And he's like, you freak. You're crazy. So he takes the letter. Um, and Evan is freaking out, worrying about what's Connor going to do. He's a school bully. He could do anything to humiliate him. Um, he could t show the letter to Zoe, which would also be not great. But things take a turn when Connor ends up committing suicide. And Evan's letter is found on him. So... His parents think that he and Evan have, are like secret best friends. That combined with the fact that Connor signed Evan's cast. And Evan kind of tells his lie to make them feel better. And saying, yes, we were friends. Connor wasn't completely alone. Um, and then everybody, it really blows up out of proportion when it gets out. Um, the school is in shock and reeling and in grief and everybody wants to reach out to Evan as like Connor's best friend um, and so Evan's life completely changes because of this one lie and the rest of the story is really about kind of the crazy things that happen to Evan because of this how Connor's family starts paying attention to him they want to know more about their son Evan ends up telling more lies um, Zoe starts paying attention to him um, and definitely the rest of the school is paying attention to him and he's got kind of celebrity status. Um, so this, this play, this book is really interesting. Um, it's got this weird mix of being kind of depressing and processing grief, dealing with Connor's death, dealing with Evan's depression, um, dealing with feeling isolated and not understood. But also it's kind of uplifting, kind of seeing everybody pull together in the wake of Connor's death seeing people reach out, um, seeing Evan trying to make Connor's family happy and trying to make everybody else feel better and ease their grief. Um, 
So it's got this really, really weird mix, which when I watch the musical, since most of the songs are very uplifting, but at the same time, they're about very dark topics. I kind of felt like I had an emotional whiplash um, watching the show and feeling like I was going back and forth way too quick. Um, sometimes simultaneously feeling very depressed, very sad, but also very uplifted. And so I didn't, it was so confusing and it felt so awkward to go through. Like I, I, I left the show feeling uplifted um, and kind of hopeful, but at the same time, this nagging feeling at the back of my mind that this is weird and wrong. And also I couldn't fully turn off the analytical part of my brain that was questioning um, Connor's absence and the whole thing. Like all this stuff, everybody's talking about Connor, but nobody knows him. Like he, the minute he committed suicide, he lost the ability to tell his own story and he really hadn't connected or told anybody beforehand. So his story's there and open for interpretation from whoever wants to do it. And it feels weird and wrong. Um, this book does deal with grief and it definitely deals with suicide and the aftermath of it. There are definite consequences um, to Connor's family. Um, we definitely get to see the consequences of Connor's decision, um, how it affects his school, how it affects his family. Um, so it definitely doesn't glor glorify suicide. It definitely deals with the real ramifications of it. And it also deals with um, grief and how different people um, feel about it. It definitely deals with um, grief and suicide in a very real fashion with real consequences. So I enjoyed the novel more than the show just because it, I didn't have that emotional whiplash of like feeling like I was being messed with too much with like these uplifting songs and making me feel something that like I wouldn't normally be feeling about in that situation. I also like the book because part of it is told from Connor's perspective. Like the vast majority of it is still Evan and following Evan. So every few chapters we get this section that is written from Connor's ghost and we get to see Connor's story also. So not just that we get to find out more about Evan and get to see really more moments with Zoe and the parents and uh, Evan's friends. Um, but we get to see Connor and we get to have Connor's story also and we find out so much more about what Connor was feeling and what led to that point and really how everybody just thought of him as being one thing and so in a way you kind of just it's easier to just be what everybody thinks you're gonna be than to try to fight it and try to change sometimes. Um, so I really enjoyed getting to see Connor's perspective even though it's definitely more depressing than Evan's story. But I liked having that and getting that side of the story and getting to see both. So the writing in this book is amazing. It's written in a YA level. Most of it's in first person from either Evan or Connor. So we get very personal connection to the characters. It also does a good job of taking lyrics from the songs or lines from the show and putting them in here, but not making them stand out and feel like they're supposed to be something else. Um, also, there's a whole section and also there's kind of the subplot where Zoe is a musician. Well, Zoe's a musician in this show. She's in jazz band, but in here we get to see her writing her own songs, which is how some of the lyrics from the show end up in here, still in song format. But other songs from the show get interpreted, like um, there's a memorial service that Evan speaks at, and in the show it's a song, but in here it's just like a speech. Um, and I thought it worked really well. Um, so I liked the transition from a show to novel. And the way it's set up, you just, it's its own thing. It's its own story. You could go in here not having seen the show. You can go in here having seen the show or having listened to just the soundtrack also. Um, I think it's a good companion. The overall tone of both the book and the musical is that it's mostly uplifting, but there's definitely grief and depression in here and you feel that isolation but you also feel the hope of being found and that somebody noticing and caring and the importance of like even just one real actual connection to another person um how important that can be i definitely enjoyed the novel way more than the book but then the musical the musical would probably be like a three out of five stars whereas the book i think is more like a four or 4.5 stars on my perspective 
Um, so I highly recommended checking out the book. Um, I did mostly enjoy the musical, and maybe if I go back and I maybe if I get a chance to see it again, having read the book and knowing Connor's story, um, and really spending more time processing it, I might enjoy the show more on another repeat viewing um, than just seeing it once and having to deal with all the emotions all at once. So let me know in the comments below if you have read Dear Evan Hansen or if you've seen the Broadway musical or listened to the soundtrack and what you think of it. Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.